Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter and I have a really fun design for you guys today. Um, it's this cute little backpack. I'm so proud of this backpack, you guys. I love it so much. I am so glad that I grabbed this yarn and decided to make a bag with it because I just love how it turned out. I hope you guys love it too. I'm so excited for you guys to see this tutorial. But okay, so I used um, Line Brands For The Home Cording Yarn. So it's my first time using this yarn. You will need just under five skeins of it. I used the color Willow and all of that information is on my blog post. The blog post has the free written pattern. And I always recommend if you're following along with the video to always just pull up the written pattern as you go. You can double check. Um, I try my best to um, read off the stitch counts and row counts and everything like that in my video tutorial. But if you just want to make sure you are on track, then I recommend getting the free pattern for that on my blog. Um, so I'll link that in the description. And then if you prefer the printable version of the pattern that is available in my Etsy and Ravelry shop. So that's ad free and it's at a cheap price. You can grab that if you want to print out your pattern as you follow along. And then of course it's available as a line brand kit. I always recommend the kits you guys. They're such a good deal. So you get my digital pattern. So you'll get the printable version of the pattern. They'll send you a digital link to it if you buy the kit. Um, basically it's for free and then all you do is you're buying the yarn and most of the time line brand has really really good sales on kits and yarn and if you're following me on Instagram or if you're subscribed to my newsletter I always update you guys and send out information when there is sales so frequently if there's like a 35% off sale you can apply that to my kit and then you'll get you'll be getting the kit at 35% off which is all the yarn you need plus the free digital pattern in there um, so I always recommend that and you can uh, pick out the yarn color that you want as well you can swap out yarn, yarn colors they have lots of cute colors for this little cording yarn um, so I'll link all of that in the description um, but as for the pattern it's really simple it just worked out so beautiful beautifully for me as I made it there was like no issues at all I was so just like if you're a designer then you understand just how perfect it is when it just works out like that it's just meant to be um so this bag is worked up all in one piece you'll actually be starting from the back here and you work this section and then you continue along the bottom and then you continue along with the sides and the front so one big panel and then you'll just fold it together do a couple quick little seams um right along here and then same on the other side and I just use my hook and the tail of yarn and I just slip stitch it together so um, that's really easy as well and then the the front flap is also all in one piece so you'll go straight from joining it together to adding the trim here and then going straight into this little front flap so it's really easy and then the only sewing that you have to do is add on the little handle here if you want this cute little handle and then you have to um, join the straps together you just sew the ends together on the inside so really easy really really fun to make works up really quick I love this yarn it's very sturdy for a bag if you haven't tried it yet I recommend trying it out if you want to make a bag or this backpack obviously this nameless backpack I still have to pick out a name for it um, I'm holding a contest right now on Instagram for name ideas so I'm gonna go on and pick one of those before I release it but um, yeah I hope you guys like this pattern I'm so excited for it I'm so excited so I hope you guys love it and again I'll link everything in the description and then if you have any specific pattern questions where you need help you can throw your comments um, questions in the comments and other people might be able to answer that for you but um, if you want to contact me I always recommend uh, email over comments most of the time because I am able to um, see those easier and reply back to you the comments I lots of the times I don't see questions so anyways I hope you guys like the pattern and um, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial okay so for the backpack you're going to need five skeins of this for the home cording yarn by lion brand it's just a worsted weight cord yarn I'm using it in the color willow and then you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook a needle to weave in your ends and then a pair of scissors
So the main body of the backpack is going to be worked all in one piece and we're going to be working it flat and um, in rows turning after each row. So start off with a slip knot and then we're going to begin with row one, which is a foundation row, a foundation half double crochet. So to do that, we're going to chain two and then yarn over and in the back loop of that first chain you made, insert your hook and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only and then yarn over, pull through all three. And that is one foundation half double crochet stitch. And again, yarn over. Now insert your hook into the bottom of that first stitch that we just made. Make sure it goes under both of those loops. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the first loop only. And then yarn over, pull through all three. Again, yarn over, insert into the bottom of the previous stitch. Make sure it goes under both loops and then complete your foundation half double crochet. So we've made three so far and we're just going to continue doing um, foundation half double crochet stitches for this row. So we're going to be doing a total of 33. So you're just going to continue um, repeating this across. Let me show you again, yarn over, insert your hook into the bottom of the previous, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through three. So just keep doing this until you have a total of 33 foundation half double crochet stitches. Okay, so your work should look longer than this. I'm just doing a little sample here to show you guys the first couple rows of the pattern. So you should have 33 and then when you get to the end, you can chain one and turn your work and we're going to start row two. So for row two, you're going to work a single crochet into that very first stitch. And then in the next stitch, we're going to be working a treble crochet. So yarn around twice on your hook and then insert your hook into the next stitch and then yarn over, pull up a loop. You have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. So we did one single crochet and then one treble crochet and we're just going to repeat that across the row. So this treble crochet is what um, makes the little bumps on the front of the backpack. So make sure it pokes out to the other side. And then in the next stitch, just work a single crochet. And then again, do a treble. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into the next, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two. And that was our treble stitch. So then in the following is a single crochet and then make sure your treble just pokes to the front. It gives the cute little knobbly look to the um, front and back of the backpack. Um, and then just continue this all the way across the row. So just one single, one treble, repeat all the way across until you get to the end of the row. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end of the row here. I've just made a treble crochet and now we have one stitch remaining. So we're going to finish with a single crochet. So your single crochet stitch should be um, what you make in that last stitch of the row. And then you're just going to chain one and turn your work. So now you can see all the cute little bumps that gives it a really nice texture or all pushed to the side. And this is the front of the work. And then um, you sh your stitch count is also 33. So you should have 33 single and treble crochets across. And then for row three, we're just going to be working half double crochet stitches. So work one half double crochet into that very first stitch where our single crochet was made and then into each remaining stitch across. So you can see here when we did the treble stitches, it kind of pulls your work back a little bit. So you might need to kind of rotate your work so you can see the top of that treble crochet stitch. You can see here I'm rotating it to show you there's our single crochet. We're just working a half double crochet into it. So you just want to make sure you're putting it in the right spot under both the front and back loop of the stitches. So you will have to fold in your work a little bit to see as you go. Um, and then of course a half double crochet stitch is just yarn over, insert your hook into the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And you're just going to do this all the way across the row, working one half double crochet into each single crochet and treble crochet from the row below. Okay, you should have a total of 33 half double crochet. Here I am putting my last half double crochet. Don't accidentally skip that very last single from the row below. 
Um, and then that completes row three and the following rows are just a repeat of rows two and three. So the treble single row and the half double crochet row, you're just going to repeat um, over and over again. So chain one and turn your work, work a single crochet in the first, and then this is where we alternate treble and single all the way across. So this is a row two repeat, but we are on row four. And then for rows four through 25, we're just repeating rows two and three. So you wanna do the two rows that we just did until you have a total of 25 rows complete and you will be ending on a row three repeat. So you will end this part on a half double crochet row. So here it is here. Um, this is a total of 25 rows. Um, of rows two and three and this is um, the back of our bag technically again this is worked in all in one piece so we will be folding to seam it up um, so that was the back of the bag that we just made and now we are moving on to the bottom of the bag so this is row 26 and for this row we're going to be chaining one and then work one half double crochet in the first stitch and now for the um, following stitches, you're going to be working in the front loop only. So the front loop is the loop that's closest to you. So yarn over and insert your hook only under the loop that is closest to you. So normally we would put it under both the front and the back, but for this part, we're going to put it in under just one loop, the front loop only, and then just complete your half double crochet as normal. So again, you're just going to yarn over, insert your hook into the front loop only, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And you're just going to do this in every single stitch all the way across until you get to the last stitch of the row. Okay, and then once you get to the last stitch of the row, go ahead and work a regular half double crochet, putting your hook through both the front and the back loop. So both loops this time, and then chain one and turn your work and you should have 33 half double crochet. And then for rows 27 through 34, you're just going to be working one half double crochet into each stitch across, working under both loops. So no more front loop only for this part. You're just going to be working um, through both the front and the back. So this is row 27, so you need to do rows 27 through 34. And then when you get to the end, just chain one and turn. Okay, so now we have just completed row 34 and make sure you go ahead and turn your work after the last row that you just did. Um, and we are going to be fastening off here and then joining with a new piece of yarn to continue on the front and the sides portion of the bag. So you can go ahead and turn your work and fasten off. And now we're going to be making a chain and then joining into the corner stitch here, working across the row and then finishing with some more chains um, to lengthen the width. And these are gonna create the sides of the bag. So just go ahead and fasten off and then I will show you how to do row 35. Okay, so now you're going to take a new piece of yarn and just start off with a slip knot like normal. And now you are going to be chaining 12. So just yarn over and pull through a total of 12 times. And this is going to be end up being um, one of our side panels here. So after you chain 12, you're just going to join in to the very last stitch made at row 34. So that last stitch that we just made in the previous row is where you're going to work your first stitch. So it might feel a little awkward joining it in here. You're just gonna join it in with a regular half double crochet. So yarn over and then just insert your hook into that very corner stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. So you might need to hold your tail steady. Um, joining in like that just feels slightly different than normal and a little awkward to do but so you should have a total of chain 12 and then a half double crochet in that corner stitch. And now you're going to be working half double crochet stitches into the back loop only. So previously we did it in the front loop only and now you're going to be working regular half double crochet stitches into the loop that's furthest away from you. So the back loop only and do this all the way across the row working one half double crochet in the back loop only until you reach the last stitch of the row. 
Okay, and then when you get to the very end, just finish with a regular half double crochet stitch working through both the front and the back loop. And then we're going to be creating the second side of the bag. So don't turn your work at this point. We are going to be chaining 13 now so that we can match um, the other side. So the first side has 12 and then now you're going to be chaining 13 instead of 12 so that when we turn our work, um, we have 12 half double crochet when we work our way back. So go ahead and chain 13. And then when you get to the end, you can go ahead and turn. Okay, so for row 36, we're going to be working half double crochet stitches back down this chain that we just made. So in the second chain from the hook is where we're going to be working our first stitch. So yarn over, and then in that second chain from the hook in the back bump, just insert your hook, and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three, and that's one half double crochet. And you're going to do this in each of the remaining um, chains that we just made. So you should be doing a total of 12 half double crochet um, into this chain length here before you reach the main row of the bag. So just go ahead and work your way down the chain. Okay, and then once you have your 12 half double crochet and we've reached the main part of our bag, we're gonna go back into our regular stitch repeat. So in that very first stitch of the previous row, just work a single crochet. And then in the next stitch, work a treble crochet. So we're just going back into our um, normal repeat of one single crochet, one treble crochet all the way across. So go ahead and do that in this row, repeating single and treble um, until you get to the end of this main um, portion of the bottom panel. And then I will show you how to continue on with the chain section on the other end. Okay, so now we've worked our way across. You should be ending on a single crochet stitch just like normal. And now we have these 12 chains that we have to work half double crochets into. So again, we're gonna do it just like on the other side and you're going to yarn over. And then it might be a little bit hard on this first one here to get your hook into the back bump. You're gonna have to twist it a little bit and kind of work your stitch in there to get it to go in just because of the way it's joined. It might be a little tight. You're just going to work a half double crochet into it and then each of the remaining 11 chains. So you'll have 12 half double crochet on the first side and then the row of 33 single and treble alternating across and then you'll have 12 more half double crochet on the other side. So these um, extra sides are going to end up being the side of our bag um, and then the main portion that we are working on on the main panel is going to be the front of the bag. So just go ahead and finish working one half double crochet into each stitch across to the end. Okay, so when you get the, to the end, you can go ahead and chain one and turn your work. And now we're going to begin row 37. So for row 37, you're going to be starting off with 11 half double crochet. So the previous row we had 12 half double crochet, but for this row, just work 11, and then we're going to be adding in some um, detail and a different type of stitch on that 12th half double crochet. So just go ahead and work 11, and then I will show you what to do for that 12th stitch. Okay, so we have 11 half double crochet now, and then in this remaining half double crochet from the previous row, we're going to be working a front post double crochet. So I zoomed in a little bit so you can see better. So for that, you're gonna yarn over and then around the post of that last half double crochet, insert your hook from front to back and then bring it back around and then just work a regular double crochet stitch. So that's one front post double crochet, working it around the actual stitch and not into the top of the stitch. So since because we worked it around the post of the half double crochet that the top of the stitch you just leave unworked, you wanna make sure you don't get mixed up here and, and keep working into it. So skip over the top of it 
and work a half double crochet into the following. So we have 11 half double crochet, one front post double crochet, and then you're going to work your half double crochet stitches across like normal. So again, it'll look like you have a stitch um, right behind it. Just ignore it and keep going because the front post double crochet counts. And then you just work your half double crochet all the way across. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So now we have 12 stitches remaining. In this following stitch here, we're going to work a front post double crochet. So you can see here's the half double crochet stitch from the row below, yarn over, insert your hook from front to back, and then bring it back around to the front so that that stitch is laying on the hook. Then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through the final two. So that is one front post double crochet and we're just leaving the top of it alone. And then the very next stitch, work a half double crochet and work a half double crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So we have the front post double and then 11 more half double crochet. All right, and then when you get to the end, just chain one and turn your work. And now you need to work one half double crochet stitch into the first 11 stitches. So go ahead and do that. This is for row 38 and you just work 11 half double crochet. And now we're going to be working a back post double crochet. So yarn over and then in the front post double crochet from the row below, you wanna put your hook um, underneath the post so that the post is laying on it and then just work a double crochet stitch. So same thing as before, except it is a back post instead of a front post and then in the next stitch, work a single crochet and then continue with our regular stitch repeat, working the treble and the single alternating across the row. Okay, and then when you get to the front post double crochet, you're going to work a back post double crochet. So yarn over and then put your hook from back to front this time, placing that post on your hook and then working your stitch around the post of the um, front post double crochet from the row below. And then continue on with your half double crochet stitches. So just work one half double crochet into each of those remaining stitches. Okay, when you get to the end, you can chain one and turn. And now our next Following rows for the rest of this are going to be a repeat of the previous two rows. So this is row 39 and you're just going to be repeating row 37 and then the following row is going to be a row 38 repeat. So with the front post double crochet and then the back post double crochet, you're just repeating those two rows until you have the correct amount of rows um, for this side of the bag. So rows 39, through 59. So I'm starting row 39 here and it's going to be a row 37 repeat and then through 59 you're just repeating these past two rows. So this is the front post row and then the next one will be the back post row and just repeat until you have a total of 59 rows like I have here. And now we are going to be joining our bag together and working on the trim. The bottom part was the back of the bag and then we have the bottom, those are the sides and this is the front panel and we're going to just be um, working a couple of different seams here with our hook so that we can join it all together. Um, you can use a needle if you want to stitch it together but I find that using my hook and slip stitching to join is a lot easier so I recommend doing that for this project. Um, so we're just going to be folding our piece together and then slip stitching the sides. So go ahead and with your work right side up, just fold the back of the bag up so that it's laying on top of the front. And then we're going to be joining the side of the side panel into the side of the back panel and then rotating it and joining the bottom of the side panel into the bottom of the bag. So it's going to be like an L-shaped joining here. And we're gonna do it all in um, one spot. So that's the bottom there. We're gonna be joining it together. Um, so it looks like a little L-shape and we're gonna do this on both sides. So just go ahead and take your hook and make sure you have it through both of the front and the side pan or the back and the side panel. Um, and then we're just going to be slip stitching it together. 
And I found it easier to use a stitch marker and kind of mark off the spot um, before you start rotating and work the bottom. So in the very um, bottom row of the side panel, you want to line it up with the bottom of the back panel. So right where our um, back loop only's and front loop only rows are, that's the start of the bottom of the bag. Um, so you can just go ahead and put a stitch marker in both just to hold its spot. You can easily see um, where it's at as you're going, but just to make sure that you're slip stitching evenly, I recommend maybe putting a stitch marker in. And then it might be a little bit difficult to do these slip stitches here because of the type of cording yarn and just that you're working into the side of a row and not into this into an actual stitch here. So it might be a little bit finicky and might feel a little weird just cause you're not putting it into an actual stitch, but it's gonna look great when you're done, I promise. So you're just gonna put your hook into both of the panels and then yarn over, pull through both panels and pull through the loop on your hook. So you're just slip stitching to join. And you wanna make sure as you're going that your panels are even. That's the whole point of the stitch marker there, kinda make sure as you go, like I am here, that I'm keeping the panels flat and just making sure that it's nice and even so that we don't get down to the bottom and then have a wonky, uneven panel and joining because then you'll have to pull it out and redo it. So just slip stitch to join as you go, trying to keep your hook straight and even. It, there's not a specific spot where you need to put your hook. Just try and put it um, in the same spot in the rows as you go just to make it um, look as nice as possible. We can see I'm just sticking it into the ends of the rows and slip stitching to join. So go ahead and do that. Work all the way down to the stitch marker if you placed one. And if not, just work down the side and then you're going to also work along the bottom of the bag as well. So when you get to the stitch marker, just keep going. Don't tie off, just rotate your work a little bit and then work into um, the bottom of the side panel and the side of the bottom of the bag here and just work all the way across till you get to this very last corner. Okay, and then once you work your little L-shaped seaming here, you can go ahead and fasten off, and then you're gonna have to repeat the same thing on the other side. So just go ahead and close your bag up. You can put your stitch marker down here, and then you can join in at the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter which way, and then just do the same exact thing, and then just go ahead and fasten off down here as well. Okay, so once you've joined both sides, you can go ahead and turn your bag right side out. So all of the treble stitches are poking out to the outside of the bag and our seams are hidden on the inside. And now we are going to be um, working the trim around the top here. So you're gonna bring in a new piece of yarn and lay your bag right side up and we're going to be joining our yarn to the seam on the right hand side so the stitch just to the left of the right side seam into the top of the stitch just join with a slip stitch and then chain one and then work a half double crochet into that same spot so again the side panels have a total of 12 stitches and the front and back panel each have 33 stitches, so you should have 90 stitches around here, so it's really easy to keep track. So again, your backpack should have been right side facing up, and it's right side out, and then you join just to the left of the right side seam that we just created, and then you work a half double crochet into each stitch all the way around the top of your bag. You should have a total of 90 half double crochet. And then when you get back around to the beginning, just join with a slip stitch. Okay, and then this part's very important. Once you do this slip stitch join, so just slip stitch into the top of the first stitch made, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Make sure that you turn your work here. We're gonna be working back the way that we um, just came. So chain, so join with a slip stitch, chain one and turn. Um, and then you're just going to do the same thing for this round, work one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Again, you will have a total of 90 half double crochet stitches. So after you do your um, join and turn, just work a half double crochet into that first stitch and then into each of the remaining stitches around.
Okay, and then when you reach the beginning, just go ahead and join to the very first stitch made with a slip stitch. And then you're going to turn your work again, so don't forget. So just slip stitch to join, chain one, and turn your work. And then this is the round three of the trim, and this is where we're going to be putting um, some chain spaces for our drawstring that we're going to add in later. So after you chain one, you're going to work 11 half double crochet. So yarn over and insert your hook into the very first stitch, work your half double crochet, and then work 10 more half double crochet for a total of 11. And then I will show you how to um, add in the first chain space for our drawstring. Okay, so I have 11 half double crochet. Now I'm just gonna chain one, skip the next stitch, and work a half double crochet into the following. So this is going to be one of our holes for the drawstring. So after you chain one, skip one, you're just going to be working 16 half double crochet total. So it was 11 half double crochet, chain one, skip one, and then 16 half double crochet. Now we're going to be adding another hole. So chain one, skip one, and then again, work 16 more half double crochet. Okay, so we did our 16 again, and you're gonna chain one, skip one, and then work 11 half double crochet. So there was my first, I'm gonna make 10 more for a total of 11. Okay, so now I'm gonna chain one and skip one again. And now we're going to work seven half double crochet. So work seven more. And then chain one, skip one, and work 15. Okay, and then chain one, skip one, and work another seven. And once you work that final seven, you'll have one stitch remaining, so just chain one, skip over that last stitch, and then slip stitch to join into the very first half double crochet made. So we have a total of 83 half double crochet and seven chain spaces. So once you slip stitch to join, don't forget to chain one and turn your work. And then this begins round four. And round four is super easy. Just work one half double crochet into each stitch and chain space all the way around for a total of 90 half double crochet. So when you get to the chain spaces, you're going to be working into the actual space and not into the chain. So just work it into the space and do this all the way around for a total of 90 half double crochet. Okay, and then when you reach the end, just go ahead and slip stitch to join, and then chain one and turn your work. And then now we are going to be doing round five, and then for round five, it's the same thing, just work one half double crochet into each stitch around for a total of 90 half double crochet. Okay, so after we made that last round, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Don't forget to turn this after this last round, and we're going to go directly into creating the front flap. So now we are no longer working rounds. We're going to be doing rows. So you're going to work a total of 33 half double crochet. So just join, chain one, turn your work, and then work 33 half double crochet. And then for rows two through 13, you're going to repeat um, row one. So just work one half double crochet into each stitch across. So again, it's a total of 33 half double crochet. So go ahead and work that across. When you get to the end, just chain one and turn your work and do this for a total of 13 rows.
Okay, so now we have a total of 13 rows of working one half double crochet in each for a total of 33. And now we are going to be doing some decreasing. So in the very first stitch here, just work a regular half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch through both loops, and then just work a regular half double. And now we are going to be working a half double crochet two together in the following two stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert your hook into the following stitch and pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. So that is one decrease. And then just work a half double crochet into the next stitch and into each of these stitches across the row until you have three stitches remaining. Okay, and then once you get to the final three stitches, we're going to do another decrease. So do it the same as on the first side. And then we're going to be working a final half double crochet into this last stitch here. So now we have a total of 31 half double crochet for row 14. And then you can just chain one and turn your work. And for rows 15 through 18, you're going to repeat row 14. So for the next four rows, 15, 16, 17, and 18, work a half double crochet into the first, then do a decrease, and then work one half double crochet into each of the stitches across until three remain, do another decrease, and then work one half double crochet into the final stitch. Okay, so I just finished row 18 of the front flap and I'm ending with 23 half double crochet. For row 19, go ahead and chain one and turn your work. And then for this row, you're just going to be working one single crochet into each stitch across the row. So a total of 23 single crochet for this last row of the front flap and then you can just go ahead and fasten off. Okay, so now we need to make two straps for the backpack. So go ahead and grab a new piece of yarn and then just start off with a slip knot. And for the straps, we're going to do, be doing a foundation single crochet stitch. So start off by chaining two. And then in that very first chain that you made, you're going to work a single crochet. So into that back bump, go ahead and insert your hook. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, and then yarn over, pull through both loops, and that is one foundation single crochet. Again, you're going to work a stitch underneath the one that you just made, so enter it under both the front and the back loop, and then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Might look a little confusing at first. Work another one, put your hook underneath that previous stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And you're just going to do this a total of 100 times. So you need 100 foundation single crochet. If you don't want to work a foundation single crochet stitch, you can also just start off with a chain instead. You can chain 101 and then work one single crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each chain across for a total of 100 single crochet at the end of row one. So either way you do it is fine. They're both going to turn out the same. Um, I just prefer doing the foundation single crochet stitch. It's really a um, helpful stitch to learn. If you haven't, I have um, slower videos on how to do it on my page as well if you want to check them out. Okay, so after you have 100 foundation single crochet, I'm just doing a little short version here to show you. You're gonna chain one and turn your work, and then in that very first stitch, just work a slip stitch. So insert your hook into both the front and the back loop, and then just yarn over and pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook as well. So one slip stitch. 
and then you're just going to do this in each of the 100 stitches so insert your hook yarn over pull through and pull through the loop on your hook and do it all the way back down the length of single crochet and then I also recommend doing the foundation single crochet instead because you can kind of test out your straps and see if you want them longer or shorter without having to pull everything back out like you do with a chain. So if you work 100 and um, you can thread them through the backpack, I'll show you later on how to do that. Um, and then you can decide if you want them longer or shorter before seaming them together. So it's easier to customize the length as well. Um, for your straps but I did 100 for mine and I like how they sit and fit with my backpack but you can decide if you want it longer or shorter you get all the way down the, to the end you can just go ahead and fasten off and then you need to make sure that you go back and make another one and then leave a tail long enough for sewing so I left plenty of um, tail length so I can sew these two ends together about 12 inches or so Okay, so now we need to make the little drawstring cord, which is really simple. Just go ahead and chain 125. So just yarn over and pull through a total of 125 times. Again, I've already made mine, so I'm just doing a um, little mini version to show you guys here on video. So after you have 125 chains, um, you're just going to put your hook into the second chain from the hook into the back bump yarn over pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook as well and then in the next one insert your hook yarn over pull through and pull through the loop on your hook so you're just slip stitching back down the chain to make a nice sturdy cord for the drawstring so again i chained 125 and then i'm just slip stitching all the way back down the chain and then when i get to the end just fasten off like we did with these straps Okay, so here's my chain that I already made and I'm going to show you guys how to thread it in to the backpack. So you can go ahead and grab your backpack and then just place it out in front of you. You shouldn't need a needle um, or anything to thread it through. The holes are pretty um, big enough for you to just use your fingers. So you're going to take your cord and then in the very center um, hole in the front of the backpack, just put your cord from front from the outside to the inside so this needs to be put in a very specific way and then just thread it back out to the front on the next one and then from the outside to the inside on the next one it's important that this side the sides are that the cord is on the outside and then thread it again and then your cord will be on the outside along the back of the backpack so you're just threading it in and out as you go back in and then from the inside to the outside, outside to the inside and then you can just pull it through and make it even and then you're going to pull, um, pull it through the same hole that you started with. So now from the inside and pull it out. And then that way when we use the drawstring to close the backpack, it folds the sides of the bag in just like that. And then it helps keep the back of the backpack flat because we have that cord going along the back. So that's how you thread it through. Okay, so now we're gonna take our straps and sew them into the backpack. So I'm just using a larger um, plastic needle here um, and I'm going to show you guys how to join it into the backpack so the chain one space is where we did the drawstring cord there should be a chain space um, just above each of the seams that we did so the ones that are lined up with the seam is where you're going to be um, putting your strap so you can just thread it through so um, the top part of the strap comes out of that same spot as the drawstring. And then for the bottom of the bag, you're going to join it in just to the um, corner of the treble stitch down in the very bottom corner. You can really put it anywhere that you want, but I found that this um, worked perfectly for mine. 
So it might be a little bit of a tight fit, but that is what we want just to keep our bags nice and secure. So again, you can use your needle and then just thread the tails through um, just to the corner here, right where the um, corner seams meet, where we seamed the L shape and then um, right next to the treble stitch, there's a space large enough to insert your needle and then just pull it through. Okay, so I turned my bag inside out so that it'd be easier to show you guys how to join. So I have my strap um, threaded through the top um, of the drawstring chain space and then the bottom. And now you're just gonna use the tail of yarn and just sew it together. So you can sew it however you prefer to do. Um, and just make sure you stitch it together really secure. You'll want to um, go back and forth multiple times here. Um, I'm just using my needle and then bringing it through both. And then I went back several times and just kind of worked my um, tail in and out of the stitches to make it as secure as possible um, before weaving in the end and tying off the rest. So just use your needle and then join the ends together to secure the strap. And then you're going to need to repeat this same thing on the other side, thread your strap into the same spot and then sew it together as well. Okay, so now we're gonna make the little handle that goes on top of our backpack. So grab a new piece of yarn, start with a slip knot, and then you're just going to chain four. You also wanna leave a tail long enough. I left about 12 inches here um, to sew the handle to the backpack. So after you chain four, you're just going to work a single crochet into the second chain from the hook and in each chain across for a total of three single crochet. So that completes row one, three single crochet, and then you're just going to repeat that for a total of 20 rows. So once you get to the end, work your final single crochet here, chain one and turn your work. And then four rows, two through 20, one single crochet in each stitch across, chain one and turn. So go ahead and do a total of 20 rows. Okay, and then here's what our little handle looks like. When you fasten off, make sure you leave another tail on the other side to join as well. And then we're gonna use these tails to sew down the um, last two rows of each side of the handle um, to secure it into place. So I have my handle, so here's my front flap. And just in front of the drawstring, I have it folded down here. And just in front of it is where you're going to be joining in your handle. So you're just going to use your needle and then line it up um, evenly in between both sides of the drawstring here, and then just sew it in to join. I did about two rows on each side. Um, is how far I sewed mine in um, to help hold it down flat and just keep it more secure. And then I also did this little X shape with the tail. Um, so if you wanna do that, you can as well. I just created by sticking the needle up and then pulling it out to the other side and pulling it down to create a little X detail. You totally do not have to do it that way. You can sew it on however you want. Personal preference, just make sure you sew both sides on. Um, and then make sure you secure it really well on the inside, especially if you plan on actually holding your bag by this handle or picking it up by it. I found it to actually be really sturdy and it ended up working out. Um, so just make sure you sew it on really nicely. Okay, so here is our cute little backpack. Once you have the strap sewn, the handle sewn, we have the drawstring in, and this is the final um, look here. So here's my strap um, and the little X detail that I was sh telling you guys about here's the back. And um, you can pull the straps through the inner um, chain spaces too, I wanted to point out. If you wanted to move them in a little, you could do that as well. Um, 
So yeah, here is the finished piece. And then all that you have left to do is weave in the ends. I still have some ends in here. Don't judge me, but you just take your needle and then you can weave it back and forth a few times. So you'll want to do that for any remaining ends that are on the inside. And then that is it for this pattern. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.